This is the moment I have been waiting for. I could hear it, I could feel it in my bones. My knees were shaking. It was like the weather was coming in. My internal barometer about rotary engines was absolutely correct. It is time to rebuild the Renesis. This is peak, your friend hates you. That, that's exactly what it is. I'm the Toby McGuire. So we did all that and uh, now doesn't want to start. I'm gonna have him push me. Try to pop start it. If that doesn't work, we're gonna have the truck do it because apparently there's a rule. I can't push it into the shop, it has to drive. It will do it, but it won't do it consistently. I want to point out that he left the battery plugged in over the whole last week. So I did not. I've unplugged it twice. You did not. I did. That's a lie. As an absolute certain, then, I came by it and unplugged it. Then somebody's plugging we'll, it in. We'll, we'll, we're gonna no, have a little no, bit no, argument. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm, I'm still gonna be a really good friend and push his ass. The rule is you can't bring a rotary in there unless it's running. Is that a shop rule now? That is a shop rule. Because that, that hasn't been the case <laughs> you've for, seen the, for you've a seen, long time. You, there's that trail from the four rotor where it was like coasting in with its transmission blown to pieces as it both drive shafts. <laughs> still counted. The battery still cranks. Oh, uh, then why isn't it started? Because <laughs> uh, it, it's a Renesis, Rob. Well, well, we went over this. <laughs> You're not strong enough. I'm not. I'm gonna push you. I'm just gonna actually take the truck and straight up push you. Okay. Our whole channel is a commercial for Dodge at this point. Look at that, that's my bigger van right there. I think so. You ran over your license plate. That was way too much for me. Oh, he's going. I owe him a new bumper. I did not realize if it came in like that. I was gonna actually hit him really hard, but I realized he doesn't have airbags. I still do. I would hate to deploy the airbags on the truck. So that confirms just a cool and seal. Uh, I think you dropped this. I owe you a new bumper. Is it that bad? I felt it. It's kind of bad. Ah, who cares? Have you guys seen the front? This is no big deal. <laughs> I really wanted to do it. I'm happy that, that you're happy. The reason why I wasn't starting was because it's coolant all in that chamber and it just doesn't want it to spark. You can't spark coolant. Yeah. Coolant's non-combustible. In that case, since it's running, we're going to the beach. Before I take it apart and it becomes even worse. I don't want it to look dusty. I'm actually just going to drive it to the self wash because I'm going to bitch like some people inside scared to drive his running cars. We're just going to go to the self wash and then I just give her a quick little rinse. You know how Rob's scared to drive his cars to the track or whatever. Oh no, we made it here. Safe and sound. Now time to wash it. Get that one headlight, you know? This is what Joel has been waiting for. Will it start after I washed it? We're all very skeptical in here. Easy money. Fire No, it was just rubbing. Oh, that rubbed really hard. Yeah. You grabbed it. If it's not flat, then I'm gonna do it again. Cheering up, but it's it's not. It this is how pretty it is. It's clean right up. Besides the splatter from the coolant, look how good the plastic piece stood there the whole time. No way. She did donuts. She started right up. No issues. She did lock a little bit, but I mean I could pull it out. It's the power of Bobbleine that I put in there. That that's all I'm gonna say. Our roles are reversed because normally it's me going, hey, my car's running perfect. I mean, other than it dying at idle, other than it was doing that weird thing of boost, and other than the leaks and all that, the car's 
perfect. It's flawless. <laughs> I want to sit in the corner over there, fingering my belly button, and watch you pull this engine. Well, it's hot as hell now. Um, so we'll let, it, let it cool down, and then I think I think we got. We tools for this. Uh, uh, you have any batteries anywhere? Yeah, yes. yeah. in every man's life where you have to improvise. The person before me had made this for regular two rotors, which is fine, but see, my two rotor is special. I am putting all my hope on five nuts and a long M8 bolt. If it doesn't, it doesn't, so well. If it does, this is why you guys remember my name. This is the Mazda six port timing. Weird thing that these all have to be cleaned out because those things are yucky. That is the engine harness right there. Not as cool as mine. It's shattered. No, that was just the plastic. It's okay, because we have a video coming. You guys will learn how to rewire your whole RX-8. That's right. Badass. You guys shouldn't do it to your RX-8, but you have to do it to something else. I'm that picture of Leonardo DiCaprio looking at that thing that Brad Pitt showed him on his phone. He's like, <laughs> so this is the front cover. Do you think this is like the pressure regulator? But look how cool this is on top of that. This is your oil line to your oil metering pump and the daisy changes. The original RX-8 is over here on the hot side and it comes up and does all this. And look, there's six of them. That actually That's, looks pretty badass. That does look pretty badass. Besides side yeah. port being trash, you can't even see the apex here that when, when you twist it. Like that, that's such a satisfactory moment. Yeah. Oh. Finger that shit, yeah. That's what it does? It just comes out? Side in and side out? Mm-hmm. Is there a way to make this better no this is mazda's best attempt to keep that alive with today's standard which i feel like they they did the best that they could they're like a little spider that's so cute eh. oem kind of fucked up seen some better days we're about to teach this generation how to solve their rx8 problem there's so many dead Renesis engines. Finally time to see a Renesis open. This is the most common failure that happens with them. Let's see what it is. I've gotten so many messages over the past few weeks. Should I buy this car? I said, it's not running around 100,000 miles. That's when you have engine problems that you should be very, very aware. But if you watch this video and you're like, oh, that looks easy enough, you could buy a cheap RX-8, take the engine apart, put it back together and have a great car for the next 100,000 miles for whatever it costs you to rebuild it. This will be a step by step, I guess. It's, I don't, we're not gonna do step by step, but you guys can see with your eyes. Two and an eighth. Two and an eighth. Same. Beat you this time, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know this would make a nice gas cap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my buddy has one. That's the rear nut off of a rotary engine. Uh, That's how much I love rotaries. One eternity later. Oh, 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 oh. What the hell? Wow, that was bad. Can you guys stand on it like this? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. You guys see what that took? Jesus Christ. Well, oh, how about tighten it back that tight? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's it. Thank you. This looks like a little thing that Agent Smith puts into Neo to, to track him. <laughs> What does that say about my engine? Uh, yeah, there's sludge. Definitely that oil went a little too long in there. It's really interesting. The oil pickup's still there, but the pump... There's an outlet right here, I think. There's Maybe this... it's a regulator outlet? Oh yeah, the outlet's not... Look at there's there's nothing in the front sump. 
Yeah. Normal oil is regulated from the rear iron. This this is literally a front sump because the oil outlet and inlet are right here. That you can only have sumps. It's either wet or dry. <laughs> well, I, 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 was to, I was trying to reach. Yeah. Bro. So yes, it is a sump. Thank you. Thank you. So you didn't need to design it. Amaz already made it. Run an RX8 front cover. That is one hell of a front cover. The whole oil pump assembly is really fascinating. I kind of like how they did it. I mean, it's modular. This part's actually pretty standard. Front counterweight, roller bearing. Uh, there's a special name for this style, and then that's the spacer in the front. Look at that. That's so cool. It is really cool. What is this thing? Hey. And now, uh, after all that mess, we're in the final stages of unstacking the stack, as many call it. I just want to tell you guys, cleanliness is important. If your area is clean, you feel clean, you perform clean, or something like that, you impact clean. This one's are mine. This is one of the most satisfying parts to me. They look like the Elliot. They look beefier than the OEM any other gen. I wonder how they stretch. Hope the whole thing decompress. Under a lot of stress lately. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna let him do the traditionary. This uh, is like the wishbone. Yeah. This is the moment of truth. <laughs> of course, something random has to happen. Nanotechnology, baby. Oh, it's all in there. That seal wasn't pinched. Well, so it was rotor one. God, me the oh, okay, time. Right this, this, this is Although it is flat as shit right here, the, the coolant seals. And it's flat right there too. And then let me grab this guy. It wasn't, it wasn't coming out, it was going into the motor. If you have coolant mixing with your oil, it's more than likely the outer seal or something down here messing up. If you have coolant burning, it's always gonna be this inner one. It's the coolant that's in this outer chamber here going into the combustion chamber and trying to ignite. More than likely, it's always this orange inner seal that is failing. This is my first time ever touching RX-8 side seals. And the first thing you'll notice is they are much thicker than RX-7. And they're actually also slightly on a wedge shape. They, they have two distinct things that mean you can't run them in RX-7s. All of the air and exhaust entering and leaving this engine is all done near these side seals. The apex seals aren't nearly as important on RX-8. Damn, this thing is beat up. That's all that coolant. Wow, I can't believe that thing ran. It doesn't look like it used to run. All the seals look good. Oh, wow. Oh, my. Okay. Oh, there's, look at, there's the coolant failure in rotor two. Oh, wow, yeah. It actually broke. That is the coolant seal failure of a high mileage Renesis right there. That is the answer to what is going on inside of those cheap Renesis. That's right That's at the spark, spark plug, plug yeah. is. These housings look trash, but we could resurface them on the CNC machine. Not terrible. It looks worse than it, it is. Clean up. Yeah, they, they really will clean up. It's all the schmutz from all the coolant trying to burn. But you know what's perfect is that we kind of need a test base for how we're gonna cut the housing. Yeah. The seal was starting to erode right there. On the other side. That, that'll happen. That's lower than the metal. Look at that shine, that shimmer. Oh yeah, the it's clean, isn't it? The E shaft looks good. <laughs> That's not grapefruit juice that's in there. <laughs> Extra pulp. It tried, I will tell you this much, that coolant stuff, I can see it just... Yeah, it did the best it could. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. I want you to get the full view of this. Ignore that it's sticking out up there. That is not the problem. Let me give you guys the reveal of light. There is no coolant seal in that oh, whole wow. section. Yeah, you can't, you can't seal what you, you can't seal. You know what's really weird? It's at once again at the spark plug. This guy was doing donuts like crazy. <laughs> You're wondering how damaged the coolant seal gets or was it a bad install? It's just, it just doesn't even exist. <laughs> it's deleted. And look, there's the, uh, there's look how small this apex seal is. Oh shit, that's a baby apex seal. Oh, that's seen some shit. No wonder that when we had to pull start at 30 miles an hour. You could probably reuse them though. It, that stuff tried. It definitely didn't get anywhere near here. It collected all in the flowing outside. Huh, that one's actually 
quite sunk in over there though, right? Um, I would say right here's the most sunk in. And again, it's by the, the spark plug. I always wonder why do coolant seals fail if they didn't pinch? And I think you just answered that. The hottest part of the motor, over 100,000 miles. This is where the motor failed, right here. I wanna see how much of this comes up with me. This is like split over here, that's funny. Yeah. So, so far so good, right? <laughs> okay, okay, no, no, no worries. Wow, the center of it just... Yeah, it just divided into two. It's like in Jurassic Park when Samuel L. Jackson's character's arm falls down on the girl's shoulder and she's like, oh, thank you. And she pulls it out, it's just the arm. That's what this is right here, just gone. I wonder how much aftermarket coolant seals would guard against longevity. Not just, okay, cool, replaceable for race situations, but I wonder if they suffer from the same breakdown that stock ones do. To clean up the housing considerably, but I don't see any like actual marks. You still see the original like Mazda machining on the sides. This motor's got miles, but it's- This is only a 70,000. Uh, I can definitely say all the bearings are all solid, all the everything but the coolant seal. Here's the shining light down the hallway, or whatever <laughs> the cliche is. Yeah, the light, the light at the end of the tunnel. The no, <laughs> no, you ruined what I was about to say. The light at the end of the tunnel is that if you are determined or depraved enough, you could buy a coolant seal kit. And there is nothing else that needs to be repaired on this. Clean it up, scraped off, brushed. Yeah, because it was running just like this. So as long as you have a coolant seal in there that doesn't let coolant into your combustion chamber, you will be just fine. So if you were to just take everything out, put exactly back how it was and replace that coolant seal, you yeah. could have a running engine tomorrow. Yeah. I would say that while $200 RX-8s are a liability and gonna screw you over in the short term, they actually could be diamonds in the rough in the long term if you're like us and you just wanna get dirty and take that chance. There's no damage to the actual engine. If you do not care about your mental health. <laughs> yeah. Yes, go ahead. You can take a wire brush to these. Don't leave this flaky shit in there that is asking for combustion detonation. Scrape all of it off, take a wire brush and none of that is a problem. This is my first time actually holding a RX-8 rotor too because I was like, what the hell is this curve? That, that, that's the scalloping. Nine pounds, 12 ounces. Okay. It's just bigger than that. Let's compare that to the REW. This doesn't have oil control rings. It doesn't have any of the springs. It doesn't have all that oil. Nine pounds, eight, eight ounces. So this obviously has extra oil sitting inside of it and everything. That is a much lighter rotor. I gotta just put this in my REW. The party's going good and then you just kill the mood. It's so oh, weird. God, it's, it's so weird how you do that. I don't know why you're clog blocking me. <laughs> As a rotary owner, there's always a table of undying dreams. So this will stay like this for the next two, three, four, five weeks. If you're crazy enough, you end up having two shelves. Example A. That said, I thought you were going with the fact that this table is the table of rotary dreams because we've now disassembled basically every major yeah, and this, modern. This is the stainless table that my boy put together. We solved the CSI. We know what happened and we can kind of understand why it happened. We can't guarantee that we can prevent it from happening in another 100,000 miles. I won't be alive that long. <laughs> I'll be dead to one of these. The good news is that it can be a quick replace. This thing can be back up and running, but we'll clean this up. This deserves some elbow grease. It's gonna look pretty good when it's all done. This is an amazing opportunity to see everything that you have here. You, the next video is gonna be all about 